Okay, so this first presentation is about managing behaviours of concern at the moment. Um, we'll be thinking about the importance of behavioural approaches. Uh, we'll be thinking about your own well-being and we'll be thinking about more specific information about managing behaviours of concern at the moment. Then we'll be thinking about some current things that people might be experiencing, so missing people and places and adjusting to changes. Um, it's important um, to remember that I'll be able to give you some general guidance, but for more specific um, strategies relating to particular people that you're supporting, you might need to make a referral to your local learning disability team. Okay, so behavioural approaches have been quite important at this time, um, just generally. So because of coronavirus and COVID-19, the governments have to think of ways that they can um, put in place approaches to try to change our behaviour and make sure that we stay at home, especially to begin with. Um, so the government had a strategy which was a clear message and that was stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. Um, and that was a behavioural approach in itself and that was a clear positive message and it gave us a sense of shared responsibility. Um, so you could call that a system-wide behavioural approach. Um, but we will have all also done individual things for ourselves that helped us manage um, in the situation. So um, for example, some people might have done knitting, some people might have done Zoom calls or baking or online workouts or mindfulness. Um, you might have had specific routines. Some people it helps for them to have a bath. Um, so there are system-wide approaches, but then there are individual things that we'll have done when things are more difficult, when staying at home has become hard. Similarly, thinking about positive behavior support, there are system-wide approaches um, things like environmental considerations, having activities, um, training for staff, active support, um, having unconditional positive regard for the people that you're supporting, setting clear expectations and giving positive feedback. But then there are also more individual person-centered approaches. So there'll be specific things that you do depending on the reason for the behaviour and depending on the person that you're supporting and their particular skills and interests and their own history. And that would include um, any trauma that they might have experienced and also their attachment development. So today we might be able to share some of the general principles and system-wide approaches that might be helpful, but then there'll be also more individualised person-centred approaches that will depend on the person that you're supporting. Okay, um, it's also important that you think about your own well-being at this time. You'll all be looking at your computers at the moment and hopefully your computers are plugged in and charged so that they don't run out of battery during the webinar this morning. Um, it's important that you also make sure that your own battery doesn't run flat um, so your own well-being is topped up um, and think about what keeps you energised and keeps you motivated and that will be again individual and specific to you. Um, this YouTube video um, was put together by the Sussex Partnership NHS Trust and there's a link above and that has lots of different ideas of ways to help um, people cope, different coping strategies, so that might be a tool that's helpful for you. So when you're uh, at this time people might be facing behaviours that they've not seen before, um, so if you are facing a new or um, behaviour that you've not seen before, these are approaches that might be helpful, general approaches in, in your response to that behaviour. So first of all, um, take a deep breath. Um, you could try some diversion or distraction to the person's preferred activity or conversation topic that they like. Um, particularly possibly someone with autism who's got a special interest that might be a helpful way to distract the person. Um, think about whether you can safely give the person some space. 
um, give the person what they want if you know what it is try to show a calm and relaxed um, tone and body language try to model what it is that you want the person you're supporting to be doing as well um, try to reduce verbal communication use your body language and makaton signs um, if the person uses them as well um, try to stick to keywords and use a person's name and and say what you want to see so for example say john put the chair down rather than don't throw the chair because there are lots of other options that the person could do instead of throwing the chair and it might not be things that you're wanting to see um, but if you're specific and positive in your language that can be helpful um, if you're struggling do make a referral to your local learning disabilities team um, if you're overwhelmed ask for support and in a crisis um, call 99 um, NELFT also has a mental health direct number for in times of crisis so please use that resource as well if you need to um, I'm now going to show you the escalation cycle. So people go through different stages in, in terms of their behaviour. Um, the green line at the bottom represents when someone's calm and relaxed um, and there are particularly, particular strategies that are helpful at that time. Um, the orange line is when someone's, um, there might have been a trigger and someone's behaviour is starting to escalate. So that's when you might start to see some warning signs. And then the red line is uh, the point of crisis. So that's when things have got really, really bad. Um, the yellow line shows when um, someone's de-escalating and calming down. But it's important to remember that while the person's calming down, they're still quite heightened and it's quite easy to re-trigger them back into the point of crisis. Um, you'll also notice the blue line um, at the bottom. So after, after an incident, sometimes people can become more withdrawn or perhaps tearful, um, and we call that a post-event depression. So thinking about those different stages, um, it's helpful to know what the person you're supporting does um, in those different stages, um, what their behavior looks like. So what you might see and what you might hear and it's important that everyone supporting the person has a shared understanding of what those things look like. So it can be helpful to fill in a table a bit like this. So thinking back to that escalation cycle and then thinking about for the person you're supporting, what's happening at those different stages. Um, and once you've got that shared idea, you can start to think about what responses might be helpful. Again, it will be really specific to the person. Um, I've noted down a few ideas here, um, but yeah, it will depend on the person's skills and interests and also what the reason for their behavior is. Um, Sam is going to go into a bit more detail on behavior support plans later, but this was just a quick um, introduction. Um, so if you've seen especially um, a new behaviour, you'll be wanting to work out what's going on. Um, it's also important um, for some of the people I've worked with, we've seen a reduction in behaviours at this time. So it's important to think about why that might be happening and use that learning for supporting the person in the future. Um, you might have seen previous behaviours come back um, and you might have also seen new behaviours. Um, to start with, it's important to think about physical health. Um, get in touch with your GP if you need to, organise health checks if you need to, um, think about what the behaviour might be communicating, um, try to think about times when the behaviour doesn't happen because this can give us important information about what is working for the person, what is helpful for them and we can try and provide more of that if possible. Um, and also try to make some notes about when behaviours are happening. Um, this can seem like a big task when you're already overwhelmed and really busy, but even just noting down the time that behaviours are happening can be helpful and can help you start to see if there are any patterns going on. Um, the Challenging Behaviour Foundation have put together a really helpful guide, um, a visual guide about supporting people um, who can engage in behaviours and concern at the, this time. Um, so do look up that guide if you have a moment to. Um, 
finally, I'm just going to talk about some of the reasons that people might be particularly more likely to engage in some behaviours of concern at the moment um, with the current restrictions that we're all experiencing. So people you support might be missing places and missing people that they'd usually spend time with. Um, I've gone through some of the issues that people might be um, dealing with at the moment and a few ideas of things that might be helpful in response to these. So in terms of day centres and activities not happening, um, it might be helpful to show photos and videos of centres with a close sign. Um, it might be helpful to try and put together a rich variety of activities during the day. Um, it might be helpful to use phone or video calls with people's friends from the centres. Um, we've already been experiencing these restrictions for quite a while at the moment, so you might have come up with lots of creative ideas yourself. Um, these are just some additional ideas in case they're useful. Um, people will be having less contact with their family and with their friends, so again, video calls might be helpful. Um, if people aren't shielding, then meeting in parks with one other person, keeping that two metre distance, um, sending letters or photos, making birthday cards, um, also looking through old photos and memories of times with family and friends. Um, nostalgia can be really um, uplifting at the moment. Um, there might also be favourite places that people aren't able to go to, like cafes and restaurants. Um, so people could have takeaway nights, um, try cooking new recipes, um, also making mealtime special, so maybe having placemats or paper flowers on the table, having themed meals, um, yeah, making favourite foods, maybe having a video call during a meal or cooking together through a video call. Um, another place that's closed is cinemas and also theatres, um, so maybe having a film night at home rearranging the furniture, um, having a popcorn server, and maybe having some pick and mix um, might be one way to kind of help with those things. Um, there are also lots of changes to adjust to. So lots of extra demands are being put on us and the people we support, and that can be a challenge. Um, and that can possibly lead to more behaviors of concern happening as well. Um, so one of those is keeping two metres away from other people. Um, to help with this, you could practice ha visualising how far two metres is. So think about something that the person's familiar with. Um, roughly two metres is the length of two trolleys or the width of a car. Um, you could use a garden and measure out two metres using some string to show people how far that is. Um, if someone's six foot tall, then their hand span will be about two metres. So that's another way of remembering what the distance is. Um, also, people will be asked to do more frequent hand washing. Um, so ideas like playing someone's favourite song while they're washing their hands, setting a timer as a reminder, um, using visuals can be helpful because the verbal nagging can get quite frustrating for people. Um, maybe buying someone's favourite smelling soap and moisturiser, offering some choice can help with that. Um, in terms of more frequent cleaning at home, um, helping people that you support choose roles and responsibilities so that they're involved can be helpful. So Kelly might want to be in charge of spraying and wiping the table after meals. Um, and that way, yeah, having people involved and having a sense of responsibility can help um, keep people more motivated. Um, another change might be people wearing masks and gloves more of the time. So having a photo of yourself on your clothing can be helpful. Um, making videos of masks being put, in, put on. Um, using Makaton signs and objects and photos to help with communication if you're wearing a mask. Um, the person that you're supporting might feel more reassured if they have a mask to familiarise themselves and to touch and explore to help them desensitise to what a mask is. Um, so that's another um, idea for one of the changes that people might be experiencing. Um, I've just done a general introduction and there'll be some more presentations coming up that go into a bit more detail. Uh, thank you for listening and um, we will shortly be moving on to the next presentation.